Rose Guantanamo. Charles for everyone. Rose Guantanamo. Okay, hi. So, why are you here today? We're here to protest against Guantanamo Bay, which is the US naval base in Cuba where they've been holding suspects in the war on terror without trial or charge for five years. So, uh, what's, what's happening on the protest? Can you tell me what's happening? Well, we've got about 70 people here, all in orange jumpsuits, um, uh, the same sort of suits you see on the Guantanamo inmates. And they're all standing around, and then we've got a cage with people in, and then people are trying to get signatures for petitions to the US Embassy. And every time we get a full page of signatures, someone gets released from the cage. Super. Uh, what gave the idea to uh, come to uh, the Central Nottingham and do this process? Uh, it was, the main idea came from our events officer, John Marks, who's full of enthusiasm. It's a big amnesty campaign at the moment, and we wanted to make an impact because the, new, the old committee wanted to go out with a swing, and this is what we decided to do. Details you can give me on the type of things that are happening at Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, uh, well, the, instead of a fair just trial, um, the detainees that are being tried, and most of them haven't been charged at the moment, but the only trials in prospect are military run trials where there's far lower standards of evidence than normal, where evidence obtained under torture that does go on at Guantanamo Bay can be used, and where detainees and their lawyers can be shut out from the trials so they can't hear all the evidence against them. And there's also problems, as we say, with torture. Um, this has been complained about by the inmates and also by in organisations such as the UN, the FBI and the Red Cross. And that includes uh, sleep deprivation, putting them in bearable positions for hours, waterboarding, which Dick Cheney laughably said wasn't torture, when it is. Um, that kind of thing. That's super, thank you very much. <laughs> Wait. Uh, yeah, awesome. Hi, we're in Market Square. Uh, we've got uh, two people here from Amnesty. Can you tell me your names and uh, what are you doing here? George. And I'm Natalie. We're from the um, Amnesty University of Nottingham group and we're protesting against Guantanamo. It's five years too long. Okay, so um, it's a Saturday afternoon. We're in Nottingham in the city centre. There's lots of people with orange jumpsuits. Could you explain what's going on? Um, well, today is the final big event of a really successful year that Amnesty International Society at Nottingham University has had. Um, we've got together loads of people from the SCENE network, from the Ethical Environmental Network, to um, all get together to protest against Guantanamo Bay. Um, a lot of people have asked what we can actually achieve from one single protest, but I think today is really about showing our solidarity with a lot of other people doing a lot of actions across the, across the um, universities all, out, all throughout Britain. Um, yeah, I suppose, I suppose there are a number of contentious issues concerned with this Guantanamo, um, the, the, the whole Guantanamo um, issue. But um, I think what we're here today is to give a voice to people who are, who are innocent in there. A lot of people have been coming up to us saying, um, saying you know, how do you know there aren't people in there who are guilty, who are maybe a threat to society. But we're here, yeah, to give people a voice who've been silenced, who've got no right to trial, no right to their family. Um, so yeah, we're making a stand for those people, making a stand for the innocent people in there today. Could you say something about um, Amnesty International in Nottingham, kind of what's been sort of maybe happening recently and is, are there plans for doing things in the future? Um, well at the moment the committee is just about to change so this was our final big event. Um, I think the society took the decision quite early on in the year that we're going to keep our actions very local. It can be quite difficult on a Monday lunchtime to come in and work out how you're going to end the death penalty or how you're going to stop arms. So what we decided to do is take a really, fo really sort of focused approach to our campaigning. So when last year we did Stop Violence Against Women we, took, you know, we got involved with a local women's aid, local women's branch just to make sure that people are aware of sort of the injustices, human rights abuses that are sort of going on on our own doorstep. If we can, you know, if we can make people aware of that, then surely we're giving people a greater perspective in terms of, of the human rights abuses going on across the world. So, so, yeah, we have been really successful, and I think not only raising awareness in the campus community, we've been pretty good at that, but we've also spread the message out, and I think today's the final, final um, stage of a really successful year for us in terms of doing that. If you were to say something really short to people who've been very reluctant to see kind of the uh, success of actions like these. If you were to say something really short to kind of people who think that things like this don't make any difference, what, what would you say to them? I'd say, I'd say I agree with the idea that one protest can't do very much, but um, considering the work that's been going on with Amnesty in London and the work that's been going on by Amnesty all across the country, maybe as one small protest we can't do very much, but we're showing our our support for everybody else, all trying to have a go. You know, those people have stopped us and said that we won't achieve very much today. We've had quite a lot, of, had some hostility from some people, but um, 
but we've got to show our support. It's better to do something than to not do something. As you know, the, the sort of cliche goes, um, to be neutral isn't an option. We've got to show people that we are aware of these problems and that we're prepared to, to go herd the way everyone else in Guantanamo is unable to voice their opinions. Thank you. Thank you. Have you got anywhere to go right now? Yeah. Got a busy day? Yeah. yeah I'm, uh, I'm off to do some canvassing in the meadows now. Ah, okay. It's for an in independent media project called Indie Media, by the way. We're doing some recording, okay. publishing on the internet. Sure. Um, so, Alan Simpson, uh, MP for um, South and Nottingham. Why, um, wh wh why did you just join the uh, protest? Well, what we've got in Guantanamo Bay is an example of a rogue state, the United States, taking people completely in defiance of international law and holding them outside the framework of legal rights that have been set out in the Geneva Convention about the rights of prisoners, the right to a trial, the right to know the charges that you're faced with, the right to decent treatment uh, once you're held in detention. And in a sense you have the most powerful nation on the planet acting as though it is a terrorist cell. And I think what that does is not only brutalize and damage those who are held in Guantanamo Bay, but it brutalizes society. I mean, there's a lovely line in a, an old Bob Dylan song in which he says, to live outside the law, you must be honest. And what's going on in Guantanamo Bay is neither legal nor honest nor decent. Do you think, um, to what extent do you think um, actions like this um, make change will actually push to eventually close, possibly close Guantanamo Bay. Well, it would be nice to see uh, to, to say that it would bring about change immediately, um, but it won't. The important thing about this is the protests of this kind, if they take place systematically in every town, in every city across the country, and if we see the same sort of protests being echoed in every country certainly in the industrial world, you start to have a momentum in which civic society says to their governments, you cannot remain silent in the face of a, an horrendous, blatant abuse of both the judicial protests, protests and of human rights. And, and so if citizens have the courage to stand up where their governments have lost that courage, in a way we're not only providing the world with an, a non-negotiable constant demand for the release of those prisoners, but also for a return to a framework of international justice. Thank you. Okay. Have a good day. All right. Yep. All right then. Um, can you say something about what's been happening today here in, uh, in Nottingham? Absolutely. We've got um, students from the University of Nottingham, members of the um, Amnesty Society at the University of Nottingham, come out to protest against Guantanamo Bay. It's about two months now after the fifth anniversary of Guantanamo. It was opened in 2002. And we're saying it's five years too long. The, um, the practices that the, uh, the US military use and that the US government condone there are totally reprehensible. They seem to fly in the face of all that America has ever stood for in terms of um, human rights, in terms of free will, in terms of fair trials for criminals. We're saying that if people in Guantanamo are guilty, and none of the people that have ever been held there have ever been charged with a crime, if they are guilty of any crime, they need to be charged in front of a fair trial, and the evidence needs to be presented <laughs> for why they're being held there. Otherwise, it's illegal, as far as I'm concerned. If you, would so if you would have to say something really short to a lot of people who are very apathetic about these kind of issues, what would you say? I would say find out as much as you can about what's happening at Guantanamo. You don't need to find out much until you'll be utterly disgusted by it. The moment you arm yourself with the information, you'll arm yourself with the passion to do something about it as well. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what you mean.